Fabian's plan was almost at its completion. The whole country was in debt to him. Through education and the media, he had control of people's minds. They were able to think and believe only what he wanted them to. They believed they were superior to all others. It's our right and our duty to rule. The masses don't know what is good for them. They need to be rallied and organized. To rule is our birthright. Throughout the land, Fabian and his friends owned many lending offices. True, they were privately and separately owned. In theory, they were in competition with each other, but in reality, they were working very closely together. After persuading some of the governors, they set up an institution which they called the Money Reserve Center. The government no longer borrowed directly from Fabian, but began to use a system of IOUs to the Money Reserve Center. The security offered was the estimated revenue from next year's taxes. Indirectly, Fabian had such control over the government that they were forced to do his bidding. He boasted, Let me control the nation's money, and I care not who makes its laws. It didn't matter much which group of governors were elected. Fabian was in control of the money, the lifeblood of the nation. The government obtained the money, but interest was always charged on every loan. More and more was going out in welfare and handout schemes, and it was not long before the government found it difficult to even repay the interest, let alone the capital. And yet there were people who still asked the question, money is a man-made system, surely it can be adjusted to serve, not to rule. But these people became fewer, and their voices were lost in the mad scrabble for the non-existent interest. The administrations changed, the party labels changed, but the major policies continued. Regardless of which government was in power, Fabian's ultimate goal was brought closer each year. The people's policies meant nothing. They were being taxed to the limit. They could pay no more. Now, the time was ripe for Fabian's final move. 10% of the money supply was still in the form of notes and coins. While the people used cash, they were free to buy and sell as they chose. They still had some control over their own lives. But it was not always safe to carry notes and coins. Checks were not accepted outside one's local community, and so a more convenient system was looked forward to. His organization issued everyone with a little plastic card showing the person's name, photograph, and an identification number. When this card was presented anywhere, the storekeeper phoned the central computer to check the credit rating. If it was clear, the person could buy what he wanted up to a certain amount. At first, people were allowed to spend a small amount on credit, and if this was repaid within a month, no interest was charged. This was fine for the wage earner, but what businessman could even begin? He had to set up machinery, manufacture the goods, pay wages, etc., and sell all his goods and repay the money. If he exceeded one month, he was charged 1.5% for every month the debt was owed. This amounted to over 18% per year. Businessmen had no option but to add the 18% onto the selling price. Yet this extra money, or credit, the 18%, had not been loaned to anyone. Throughout the country, businessmen were given the impossible task of repaying $118 for every $100 they borrowed. But the extra $18 had never been created at all. Fabian and his friends increased their standing in society. They were regarded as pillars of respectability. Their pronouncements on finance and economics were accepted with almost religious conviction. Under the burden of ever-increasing taxes, many small businesses collapsed. Special licenses were needed for various operations, so that the remaining ones found it very difficult to operate. Fabian owned and controlled all of the big companies, which had hundreds of subsidiaries. These appeared to be in competition with each other, yet he controlled all of them. They were swallowed up by Fabian's giant companies, which all had government protections. Fabian wanted the plastic cards to eliminate notes and coins. His plan was that when all notes were withdrawn, only businesses using the computer card system would be able to operate. 
He knew that eventually some people would misplace their cards and be unable to buy or sell anything until a proof of identity was made. He wanted a law to be passed which would give him ultimate control. Every computer would be linked to a giant central computer so that Fabian could know everything about everyone. But if you found it to be disturbingly close to the truth and would like to know who Fabian is in real life, a good starting point is a study on the activities of the English goldsmiths in the 16th and 17th centuries. For example, the Bank of England began in 1694.